listen only mode. Hey, welcome everyone. Fred Glee here with Dave Fenoy. Dave, take it away. Hey, Fred. Boy, you almost didn't make it, my friend. You don't? Uh, well, Bank of America can thank them. <laughs> better, better, well, actually, I was going to say better late than never, but you weren't late. You were right on time. All right. Hi, everybody on uh, GoToWebinar, and hello, everybody on Facebook. Good to see you. Um, while you're getting your questions together, and this is Ask Dave Fenoy Anything, anything about voiceover, uh, it could be the technical stuff, uh, it could be, you know, how to get your career going, how to deal with your, your agent, uh, whatever it is, uh, we can talk about it. You can ask anything. Um, but, uh, as we begin, I, I just had a student a little while ago and we were working on video games. One of the things I do, and he was very caught up in reading the words uh, it, it felt like for him, and I think because he came out of a commercial and narration, that the words were what were important, or the words are what are important. And I'm not discounting the words, uh, but when you're doing character work, uh, the words are only a part of it. What you really have to play are the attitudes, the, the feelings, the emotions uh, of the character. Because that's what colors the words that actually gives them meaning. Um, and uh, so when you're doing character work, how does that character feel? Play that. Gloss over the words. Uh, a lot of people think they have, oh, I'm trying to make sure that I'm reading every word and everybody can understand what I'm saying. I know very few people whose enunciation is so pure that they have to uh, make themselves enunciate better when they're doing voiceover work. Uh, listen to how your friends speak. Listen to yourself. Record yourself when you're going to hang with your friends or the person that you love uh, and see what you sound like when you're just talking. See what your friends sound like. See how uh, sentences, uh, people stop in the middle of them for a thought. They have to find the words. Your character doesn't have a script. They have to come up with what they're saying. See how the actions your character is taking uh, affects how they're saying what they're saying. What are they doing? Are they walking down the street? Are they in the midst of battle? Are they laying back about to go to sleep? All of this changes uh your delivery so just just a little tip from uh dave Fenoy as we begin to uh ask some questions here uh and uh how how we do wow we're not doing we don't have many questions from go to webinar what's up with that um let's see mark i have a question would you consider blockbuster and silver banshee as the acolytes of Zoom in the Suicide Squad movie. <laughs> oh, Mark, I love you for that, man. Um, Suicide Squad movie just came out, uh, and I play, I have a character in it uh, playing Blockbuster. Um, and I can't answer that question, Mark. You know, a lot of times uh, as a voice actor, when you go to uh, conventions, those are the kinds of questions that you get. And uh, what you realize is oftentimes those questions ought to be asked of the writer, not necessarily the person playing the character. Uh, my Until I see the movie, which I haven't seen yet, uh, as an actor, my experience of, of you know a video game, a cartoon, is very different than the person who gets it once it's done and is playing it. I don't have the benefit of the story in time. Typically, all I had were my lines, especially on a game, or maybe the lines of the person uh, that I'm supposedly talking with. Uh, more often than not, though, in cartoons, you you will do the, the whole thing uh, in sequence each episode. But that's not quite how we did uh, 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 Suicide Squad. So I can't answer that question, man. All right. What's that? You're a little muffled. 
Yeah, keep going to the Facebook group. Oh, yeah. Will do. Um, oh, well, you're welcome, Pamela. Uh, let's see. Wow. A lot of people, you know, it's um, if you're going to tune in, which I want you to do, uh, please tune in with some questions. Because I, I know what a lot of people do. They go, well, you know, people are going to ask questions and I'm going to be there with my pencil or I'm recording it or I'm going to watch it later and uh, I will I will get some information. Well, ask some questions. You know, uh, nobody wants to feel, you know, like they're silly and, oh, gee, I should know that. Um but I guarantee you've, you've got a question uh, that you'd like to know. So, are we I've there? got a question. What's your question? Well, Kayla and I are going to be going to another con, which is the Silicon Valley con, Comic Con, coming up a uh, weekend after next. Mm -hmm. And whenever we go there, she always comments and says, boy, you know, people like Dave, a lot of voice actors go to this. How do voice actors think of the cons, and why do they do them? Well, we do them uh, because people ask us to go. Generally, uh, I mean, we, we I, I recall before I was going to cons, I wanted to go to cons, and gee, how come they're getting invited to cons and I'm not? Uh, but what happens is um, usually it's one role or two uh, that uh, fans uh, fall in love with, and now uh, when the cons are being organized... Uh, and they do survey of, uh, well, who'd you like to see at the con? Perhaps your name comes up uh, because of that role. For me, that role uh, was uh, Lee Everett in The Walking Dead. Yep. Once, though, I got to the cons, yeah, the first con I went to, I, I just took you know pictures of, of Lee Everett and, and my trusty pen to sign. Uh, but then people started asking me about a lot of other characters that I do or have done. And uh, so you you kind of realize it. It's it's one thing that that draws you into the con, but it's uh, the body of your work, a uh, number of, of popular characters that people want to uh, talk about and meet you. Also, um, I have a sister who's a doctor, and I've always teased her that uh, she was doing important work, and I was just having fun. Well, I discovered at the cons that. Uh, Often the work we do in video games and cartoons really does touch people. You have no idea how important sometimes your work is uh, to some kid. I know with uh, the Walking Dead game and Lee Everett, I can't tell you how many people talked about uh, my being a father figure for them. That their father wasn't around, but they played the game and it... Uh, Lee Everett became a substitute dad for what what a dad should be, and uh, so sometimes you're doing great work. I had a a lady that uh, brought her autistic child, and you run into a lot of uh, people who are autistic or or, or have Aspergers, and uh, you discover that. For many of them, video games and cartoons are very, very, very important. Uh, and the work you're doing touches them. Uh, and it's, you know, it, it's a bit humbling. But anyway, let's see. Let me go up here. Oh, I saw a few questions go by. Um, what types of acting techniques did you study? What do you, uh, what do you study and who's your coach? Uh, good question, Mark. Um, well, I was a child actor, uh, and I studied at a community theater in Cleveland, Ohio, where I grew up, uh, and it, it was in the hood, and and so uh, if, if you see a black actor on television who grew up in Cleveland, uh, they probably went to Caramu, like I did, and that was uh, where I first started uh, learning about acting and fencing and music and modern dance. Uh, and then in high school, I was the president of my player society. Uh, I directed a few plays there, acted in a few. Then I went off to college as a theater major at McAllister College. But I was also playing music and I quit school after a couple of years and went on the road as a musician before going back and finishing up in music at Howard. Uh, and since then, uh, when I 
moved to Los Angeles I, I, after spending a little over a decade as a disc jockey in the Bay Area. Um, I would do a play every year. I took some voiceover classes and some acting classes. Uh, and that has helped me. And in, in, then over time, uh, as I've uh, taken fewer classes in the last few years, I, I do a lot of reading. So I will look at, uh, you know, diff different uh, teachers of, of, uh, of acting and look at their theories and what they believe and much of which I take in and some of which I think is kind of BS. Uh, and I, I work with that. And, and what I do with voice acting for video games specifically is gear it to the particular challenges of voice acting for video games. If you're on stage, if you're on in a movie or television show, you got other actors to work with, you're in a costume, you've got blocking, uh, you've got lighting, all, all of those things we don't have. We have a script, you're in a studio with a microphone, other people on the other side of the glass. You have to create all those things. I teach you how to do that. All right, let's see. Uh, and while you're getting that, Dave, let's just help people here on uh, go to webinar. Please put your questions in. I got one from Michael Sessoms here. Okay. What do you think of, of Alignable versus LinkedIn for leads and professional co connections? Do you use Alignable? You know what? I, uh, I have been asked to join Alignable. Uh, and I did, I don't use it much and it's not because it's not good. I, I don't know it well enough to know if it's good or not good actually. Um, uh, because I've, I'm so busy. Uh, and I think a lot of people find that there are so many, uh, social media platforms. You can't use them all. You, you just don't have enough time. So, uh, for me, LinkedIn uh, is the choice, and uh, I use it, uh, and I probably should use it more. I'm probably on Facebook more than I am on LinkedIn. Uh, so I, I really can't uh, give a thumbs up or thumbs down for Alignable. LinkedIn definitely does work, though. Let, Let me, me ask on that for you, Dave. On With LinkedIn, can you specifically identify work and jobs that you've gotten directly from LinkedIn? Uh, actually, no. Uh, in terms of, I got on LinkedIn, spoke with somebody, or linked up with somebody, and then got a job from them. Uh, so I will say no. The jobs didn't come directly from that, but like a step or two down. Yeah. Uh, I look at uh, social media, uh, LinkedIn, uh, Facebook, uh, Twitter. Uh, however, you are contacting the people who can hire you, and I, I encourage you to contact people who can hire you and remind them that you exist. Um, advertising works uh, when you're doing it all the time. Uh, think of the number of commercials you've seen and think how many times it was before you actually went out and bought that particular toothpaste or that kind of car or that shirt or, uh, or that service of whatever it was. Uh, and the reason you bought it wasn't because you saw one commercial and then you went out. The commercial was there. The commercial was there. The commercial was there. Now you need a product like that and you're reminded of that commercial and you go out or you're in a store and you see the product and you remind, oh wow, yeah, I saw that commercial. And yeah, this stuff's supposed to be pretty good. Let me that's how commercial that's how commercials work. Um, way too often people think, well, I'm gonna send my message out one time. That's one finger. Uh, I'm gonna send my message out one time and I should get some action. It's not how it works. Um, when uh, companies advertise effectively. Uh, you might not see them every day, but they'll pick uh, a month and they'll advertise heavy on particular media. And then you might not see them for a while and then they're back. And then you might not see them for a while. And uh, sometimes their advertising is very pointed towards uh, particular holidays, times of the year, that kind of thing. Uh, but you might not see them all the time, but you see them often enough frequently enough that uh, it has made an impression 
and you buy the product. Um, when cre- yeah, when creating a character, what is the easiest way to remember the sound of that character? Uh, I- I'll tell you a couple of things I do. First of all, when I- I've gotten a gig, uh, sometimes uh, when you get booked, it's weeks, months later from time to time, or you're doing a character over and over in a particular cartoon or video game. The first thing, when you go to the job, they're going to play the character for you. They're going to they're gonna reacquaint you with what that character sounded like, and that's great. Uh, but I save my auditions. So bo- uh, if I book the gig, a lot of times it's been so long, I do enough auditions, I don't remember what it was. Uh, I go back and go, oh, that's the character, and I listen to it. Oh, okay, that thing. Oh, wow, they actually hired me from that audition? Okay, great. Uh, and listen to what the, the audition was, so I'm a little more familiar even by the time I get there. But I guarantee they're going to play your uh, that character for you, so you don't have to just remember everything. All right. Uh, hey, Tara. Uh, uh, Steven, to make sure you maintain it through... Oh, to, no, wait a minute. Was that part of the... Uh, <laughs> yeah, I think it was. That was part of the other. How do how do you make sure you maintain the character uh, through your recording? If for some reason uh, you're senile enough that you don't remember the character through, you know, that that four hour session uh, or shorter, uh, they'll play it for you again. But pretty much once you've you've done it in that session, started it, it sticks with you. All right. Uh, <laughs> Uh, what do you wish you had done in your first two years as a voiceover? Wow, that's a good question. Um, I think most people uh, take classes in your first two years, get really good demos done in your first two years, uh, and nowadays, a little different than when I started, but nowadays, get a decent website up. Um, you, you want to get that done. You, you want to get yourself prepared, uh, to really take this on seriously in your first two years. Uh, you're going to need a home studio of some kind. You're going to need your demos. You're going to need a, uh, website. Uh, and, uh, I would prepare myself now, uh, in the world we're in now, I would have a rate card there, especially how to get in touch with me. I would uh, be doing much more in the way of uh, seeking out clients. Um, I would make, I would have a very good presence on uh, the pay-to-play site of choice, as opposed to the other pay-to-play site, uh, and really push that. Uh, when I started, uh, you, you know, you had to be in a certain city and you had to have an agent. Uh, and that was it. You still did some promotion on your own, but back then you'd go to your agent. Hey, listen, can you give me a, a mailing list, a mailing list, snail mail of, uh, all the broadcast yeah. producers and promo producers and animation people. Well, we're still doing the same thing. It's just, we have the internet now. So that's what I would do. Um, and... <laughs> So what's in the what's, what's been the blowback um, on voices from all the stuff, stuff they've done that got a lot of people in the way? Have you seen any changes or? Well, they, I, mean, I, don't know what their I don't know what their numbers are either, but uh, there's been a lot of people who dropped accounts with them. Uh, they bought uh, the VoiceBank.net. Uh, and agents and uh, have stopped using a lot of agents have stopped using voicebank.net and have created uh, another uh, place to, uh, another clearing house for auditions uh, so there is some blowback I don't know how much it's affecting them uh, but people find what they've been doing unconscionable uh, I'm not sure it's going to put them out of business or hurt them that much uh, because I haven't looked at their numbers, but uh, people are stepping away. You have other choices. Voices one, two, three is there. There are some other 
uh, on pay to play sites that are there. You don't have to go uh, with voices.com. Do you, have, do you have another one there, Fred? Yeah, okay. Uh, hello, Pamela. Uh, Dave, I have recently set up my home studio, but having a problem with the volume of my recorded files. All of my finished recordings seem to be very low in volume. What could it be? I'm using Adobe Audition. I'm going to suspect it has nothing to do with Adobe Audition and maybe how you are using it. My suggestion would be when you record, make sure that your level is in that uh, negative 6 to negative 3 dB range. Uh, there is a, a, a meter, uh, a, a graph of sound, and your recordings need to peak up between negative 6 dB and negative uh, 3 dB. And when you're finished, you also uh, want to uh, normalize your recording to peak negative 3 dB. Uh, if you do that, your recording should be uh, the right volume. Uh, you may be having some other problem, but I think that should solve it. Yeah, and I might add that one of the ways that people have found to get some help for free is to go to the local, local guitar, guitar center. center. A couple of guys have reported that they went over to the guitar center, center asked some questions, and they were, they were able, able to get help without having to pay. Oh, absolutely. That's a very good idea. Also, um, I think you can get help online with Adobe Audition. Uh, I think you can get help online there, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, wow. I did say anything. Hey, Dave. Uh, hey, Melanie. Uh, I want to know about your parents and upbringing. And by the way, I'm from Youngstown and I moved back home, Cortland County, Lake So. I don't know if you're from my neck of the woods. How did you get interested in this as a youngster and how did they support you uh, while raising you? Uh, I, I think what my parents did uh, was expose me to as many things as they could. Uh, I have an older sister who was interested in science. At three years old, she decided she was going to be a doctor and never looked back. I wasn't that aware as a kid. I knew I liked playing sports, and I, I knew I liked uh, entertaining. So I took music lessons, I took dance lessons, I took acting lessons, and the music and the acting stuck. Uh, and all my life... I knew uh, performance was what I wanted to do for a career, and uh, my parents supported me by indulging me in, in lessons, buying guitars, uh, a trumpet when I was young. Uh, my, I didn't really want to play the trumpet, but my dad did, so uh, I did, and uh, when I said, no, 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 I want to play guitar and play in rock and roll bands and R&B bands, um, they... <coughs> bought the guitar and I got the music lessons and uh, that was uh, my living for a long time. Uh, oh. So my parents were pretty much believers in uh, do whatever it is you want to do, but work really hard at it. I, I used to hear that. Even if you're going to be a criminal, if you're going to be a criminal, you got to be a good criminal. And I'm like, why are they saying that? I don't want to be a criminal. <laughs> Should I be a criminal? Dad? <laughs> so, by the way, you should say, say that, that your dad, dad was a vet, vet which, which gave you, again, they, they weren't, weren't in a position where they, they had, had to look, look for, for their, their next, next meal. meal. Right. right. Well, yeah, well my, yeah, my father was, uh, he fought in World War II as a first lieutenant in the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers. Uh, my mother was a school teacher. But uh, when I was a little kid, my dad uh, was the first black veterinarian to open a practice in Cleveland, Ohio. Uh, and thank goodness my mom was working because, uh, you know, you got a vet practice in the hood. Uh, people don't bring their dogs and cats in until they're damn near dead. So uh, you, you do all the treatment, the dog dies, and you say, well, that was $300, and it would, but doc, the dog is dead. <laughs> say, yeah, but I, I used the drugs. I did the operation. I did all these things. Well, can I pay you $10 a month for this? Um, but he went to work for USDA and uh, became a foreign programs officer for them, traveling the world, making sure that the meat from other countries that comes here uh, was uh, up to par. 
<laughs> oh man, you you wanted to make me tell that story, didn't you? Uh, I like it. I like it. Uh, okay, hey, um, from Sean. Hey, Sean, how you doing? Good working with you yesterday. Uh, hey, Dave, uh, have you personally done much work with motion capture performance? And if so, how much that affect your vocal performance? That uh, all the great advice. Thanks for all the great advice. Uh, Sean, I have done a fair amount of uh, motion capture. I've been in the little suit with uh, the dots all over it and dots all over your face. Um, uh, one day I'll, I'll share some more pictures of that because they like to braid my hair and do crazy things. Um, motion capture, uh, it's, it's, it's big in video games. It's a little different. Actually, it's a lot different than uh, voice work for video games when you're in a studio uh, with just a microphone and the script. Because uh, when you're doing motion capture, there's motion. You're moving. Other actors are there more often than not. You are memorizing your lines. Uh, so many of the challenges we have in voice acting for video games uh, when, it's, when you're in a sound booth with a microphone and script is different because you are moving. Uh, you are talking with a, another actor. Uh, the only difference is uh, the set pieces are, you know, it, it could be just a plastic table or something, um, but you're, you're going through the motions. So it's, uh, it's a little different animal. Uh, okay. okay, shout out to the Tuesday night workout group. Uh, how would you go about getting an LA agent when they're, when they aren't responding via email correspondence? My emails are succinct with demo and links attached, getting frustrated. Wow. That, uh, it's a tough nut to crack. Generally, uh, nowadays there are enough people knocking on agents doors uh, that there has to be a really good reason for them to take the time uh, to listen to your demo. Chances are they're busy, they're not doing it, and they don't know who you are. What you need is an introduction from somebody, uh, maybe a coach you've been working with, uh, maybe a, a friend of yours that is represented by that uh, talent agent, uh, to, you know, give you a little push. Hey, uh, my buddy, uh, Brian, uh, he's got, you know, he's really talented. He's got a great demo. Uh, can I get you to listen to it? Uh, that's what you need. Maybe in your letters, uh, if you can get somebody to uh, uh, speak up for you, and even enough to just say, hey, can I use your name? Uh, don't ask them if they don't know, though. Uh, if they don't really know who you are and or know what your work is, don't ask that person just to do it because. Because, you know, uh, you want I want my word to mean something. Uh, and from time to time, I have recommended uh, people I know uh, to be represented. Doesn't always mean they're going to take them. But if you can get that meeting, if you can get them to respond... Keep the correspondence going. Don't shower them with, with emails every week, but uh, you, you book something, let them know. Uh, and uh, make sure your, your demos are up to par. It's got to be good. Demos got to be great. Richard Horvitz is watching. Uh, how you doing, Richard? I, you know, and... While I've got you there, Richard, I'm going to bring you on and have you uh, be a guest and uh, answer some questions because uh, Richard has been in this game a long time, um, well known in a lot of cartoons and video games, and just a really great guy. Good to see you, man. Richard uh... <laughs> Horvitz, yes. Okay. Ah, hey, Crystal Lee Brown, book the motion capture video game. Need to schedule the session ASAP. All right, you know where to find me. Um, 
Do you remember uh, why your biggest initial stumbling blocks were? I think what you meant to say, TJ, was do you remember what your biggest initial stumbling blocks were? Um, probably that I came out of radio into voiceover. Um, and people talk about all the time that, uh, you know, it's, radio's not good if you're uh, going to do voiceover. Partially true. Uh, well, the thing that radio does, it puts you in that voice. Hi, I'm a radio guy, and I'm this is my voice, and I'm doing that thing. And, and you get used to reading lots of commercials that are 70 seconds worth of copy and only 60 seconds and a lot of phone numbers and addresses and how to get there and uh, this point and this price point and 20% off and so forth and so on. Uh, but you're doing that without really connection to the copy or real connection to the copy. So what it does teach you is uh, fabulous control over your voice. Uh, what it doesn't teach you is actually good acting and good connection. So probably the biggest hurdle I had coming out of radio, it was, it was both, uh, I think at the time, that my greatest benefit and uh, my, the biggest hurdle was coming out of radio. Um, I started doing... Uh, TV promos was the first thing I did, and that was kind of a, a natural adjustment out of radio. Um, but I also started doing cartoons. Well, fortunately, uh, I had an acting background as a child. So when I was playing cartoon characters, um, they didn't sound like radio. But in doing commercials... I would do commercials that sounded, you know, well, I want to sound a certain way and I want to hit all these words and I want everybody to hear everything I'm saying. Um, I kind of came with that and it took me a long time to realize, hey, you know, relax that enunciation, bring the volume down, talk to somebody, talk to somebody. That was the biggest hurdle that I had to go through. And even when I started doing video games, um, I remember a session, it was a, a callback for a, a video game. I don't know what the game was. And I, I was playing a general or something, and I was just I was just making it too big. I was just being uh, too clear with my enunciation. I was really playing uh, a, a characterization of a character as opposed to playing the character. Uh, and I didn't book the thing. And for a while there early, this is in the 90s still, um, it was kind of hit and miss uh, because I had not actually learned uh, to read the phrases, not the words, to, that, uh, to play the emotion of the character, the emotion, the attitudes of the character, as opposed to trying to make sure that everybody heard each and every word I'm saying. Uh, so that, that was probably my biggest stumbling block. And I find that in a lot of people that I work with, that somehow uh, playing a character, uh, you want to play that different than yourself as a human being. You, uh, you don't want to take time to let the thoughts come to the character. The character doesn't have a script. Uh, the thoughts have to come to them. They have feelings and attitude, just like you have feelings and attitude, and that's what you have to play. Uh, worrying about, uh, I'm going to be completely accurate with the words, and I'm going to say every word, and they're going to hear it, does not sell the character. All right. Da -da -da -da. Uh, anything specific to look out for on a mocap contract? Uh, well, um, I would have to look at the contract. You you want to make sure that if uh, there's stunt work, uh, like battle fighting scenes, that there's a, uh, a stunt choreographer or, or battle choreographer, uh, stunt person that can help you with that uh, so that you're, you don't hurt yourself. Um, just remember they're going to put you in that black suit. They're going to put dots on your face uh, and just do whatever it was you did in that audition only for a longer time. Uh, in that contract, though, um, if, if once again, I think the most dangerous thing right now 
for people doing mocap is uh, hurting yourself physically if there's, you know, fight scenes or stunts that have to be done. Okay. Uh, is it a, okay, let's see. Is it a good idea to pursue a career in acting of any kind with another entertainment career like editing? Well, you know what? I, I actually can't answer that question for you. Uh, if you've got the, the acting bug, but you're editing, um, uh, sure. Why not? But that really is a question you have to answer for yourself. Uh, almost anything you do peripheral to acting that's in the entertainment business is going to give you some perspective that some other people may not have on this business. If you are an editor, uh, you're used to seeing film and or television in a completely different way than almost any actor, unless they're editing, uh, that may affect, uh, make, help you make better choices uh, when you're on camera uh, with the thought of how is this being edited together. So uh, I, I know before I was on the air on radio, I was a copywriter and continuity director at a couple of radio stations. And that gave me a perspective on uh, what went on in the station and what their needs were that I might not have had if I had just started as a disc jockey. Of course, it was also uh, frustrating because I wanted uh, to be on the air. Yeah, what's that? So, uh, Laney, as well as probably, probably a few, a few other, other people, people unwilling, unwilling to say, say so. Ah, uh, what uh, is mocap? And thank you, thank you, thank you. Mocap is motion capture. And what happens if you are in a big studio in a black suit with dots that capture light, uh, with dots on your face that uh, let the cameras um, really know all the, the, the ins and outs of your face, all its nooks and crannies. Uh, and there are cameras all along the walls, everywhere you go. And those, when you start, all those cameras are on, catching all the action so that uh, they can show the character that you're going to be from any angle. Uh, and you're in this black suit with dots, but they are going to digitize the character that you're playing onto your image. Uh, the plus of mocap is that your movements are natural. They, they, they get your size. They get your movements. They can change that. Uh, in terms of size and your face, you can go from being uh, the person that you are to being some weird monster or something like that. Um, when you look at uh, Lord of the Rings, a guy who played Gollum, that's mocap. Um, Smog, the 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 dragon, they did some of that in mocap uh, to get get the facial work. Sometimes even when it's not mocap or motion capture, the the cameras are capturing your motion. Uh, sometimes on a, even if you're just in studio doing voiceover, there's a camera that will catch your facial expressions. So that shows up in the video game. So I hope that answered that. Good, good. Yeah. Very clear. Very clear. Uh, huh, don't know if I asked yet, but why the hair? Cause I like the hair. That's why the hair. Uh, yeah. Cool. Cool. Uh, Oh, well, thank you, Jeffrey. I appreciate that. Kind of you to say. Uh, oh, oh, returned. Uh, hello, hello, hello. Uh, let's see. I'm always being told that I sound like the IVR. I, that I sound like a the IVR by, call, by callers, booking rooms at hotels, my day job. Should I get an IVR demo before uh, recording a demo uh, or both in my second year of voice acting? You know what? Uh, if if you have the kind of voice control uh, that you could be uh, the person the, the person answering the phones, um, thank you for calling. Your call is important to us. Sure. Why not? Uh, now, typically that work does not pay very well, but I tell you what is paying better, not nearly as well as it should. 
there are more and more and more digital assistants out there. And uh, all those digital assistants uh, need voices to talk to. And as a society, we want a broader variety of kinds of voices and voices that are more natural. I just did a gig, and I guess I can say it now. I just did a gig. I think I mentioned it already. I'm one of the Google voices now. Uh, what, Google, what Google Assistant did was they said, well, let's give people a choice. We can get ages, different races. Uh, so I'll be the middle-aged black guy voice. And uh, it was uh, two weeks, four hours a day of reading some of the strangest copy in the world that an artificial intelligence program is going to uh, allow me to say anything. You could ask me anything as a Google Assistant, and I can answer you uh, anything based on the thousands and thousands and thousands of words and phrases I said. And um, these were sessions, uh, like I say, four hours, and you could be saying anything. You'd talk about um, uh, movie stars and their spouses and kids and directions uh, to this place and that place on this road and that road and turn the left and turn right and a mile up ahead. Uh, sports scores uh, uh, or you know, this team beat this team by such and such a score. Um, scientific uh, information, medical information, uh, mechanical information, just you cannot imagine how much information. And then nonsense. Uh, also, uh, sometimes you're reading a sentence in English and there are words in Spanish or words in Swahili or words in some other language uh, so that a person can find out things from other places in the world with the names of those places. Uh, uh, one of the things, I, I've always thought of myself as a pretty good reader, and one of the things I discovered is uh, I could be a better reader. And <laughs> after two weeks, I was. Uh, uh, also, uh, something I didn't expect have you ever noticed voice actors that uh, you're you're about to do something and you do that breath wind up and then go? Yep. yep well, also yep, yep. also notice that in real life you never do that. You never think about oh let me take a breath. You just start talking. You've taken enough breath. You're you're never winding up. You're just saying what you have to say and. You take your breath when you need to take your breath. Uh, the first couple of days of that, what they said was, look, we cannot have that breath at the beginning. That, And I was like, oh, I didn't even know I was doing that. She says, don't worry. Everybody does it for the first couple of days. You'll, you'll get over it. Uh, and I did. And I think it has actually made... Uh, a lot of my reads and, and promo and narration and whatnot better because I don't wind up that. And here we go. Uh, Dave, Dave, stop there. Stop what do you what think, think the wind, wind up does, does from the, from the emotional, emotional standpoint? Standpoint? In other words, when you're reading, reading promos, promos or copy, copy, how does, how does it negatively, it negatively affect? affect? Well, it, it makes you a little bit tense. Uh, I've noticed this with a lot of, one of the reasons I like to work uh, with actors on Skype where I can see them uh, is because a lot of times we're doing something with our body that is getting in our way. Uh, you'll, you'll see somebody uh, that it's an intense scene and, and they're, and it's, well, it's not that kind of intense. Um, or, or, they're, or they're just standing stiff and trying to make it happen. Your, your body informs your voice. If you're not relaxed, your voice isn't going to sound relaxed. Uh, if you are, if it's supposed to sound like you're moving, you, you need to mimic those movements. Uh, so you want to be relaxed in, in, in your movement and ready to go. And that is winding you up, uh, more than just, uh, with the breath. It's also, uh, affecting you, I think, emotionally. So the thing to do is relax you know, if you want to take a few breaths beforehand and then start in at such and such a time, blah, 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 blah. Uh, at, but, you know, which another thing, there's always something new to learn. 
Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Michael, Michael Sessons, Sessons is asking, is asking Adobe, Adobe character, character animator, animator does some mo -cap mocap with, I believe, with, I believe means lip, lip sync, sync and head, and head body, body, and face, and face movements. Oh, yeah, 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 exactly. Now, I don't know if that's the program that they're using um, when they're doing uh, facial recognition, or fa not facial recognition, but uh, they are they have a camera on you so they can match your mouth and facial movements uh, to the character that you're playing, even if that character is a, a zebra or a dragon or a hippopotamus or something, uh, they can still pull some of your facial features, your eyes, your mouth, uh, you know, maybe your eyebrows going up. They can still pull that into the character that they're, they're uh, animating. Oh, go Facebook. Okay, hey, Terrell Miles. Kiff! Uh, says IVR is how I got started with a company in Toledo, uh, businessvoice.com. Thank you. Once again, this is why I love doing this on Facebook with you guys, as well as, uh, go to webinar, uh, because so much wonderful information can be shared. Thank you, Kiff, a uh, great voice actor, um, and uh, businessvoice.com, I'll say it one more time, if you're interesting, interested in, in uh, being one of those voices, telephonic or, or uh, informational, uh, businessvoice.com. Okay. Uh, what's my portable solution? Ah, Kiff again. Do you have a portable mic recording gig bag or something uh, so you can do last minute stuff away from your booth? Absolutely. Uh, I used to carry a whole suitcase full of stuff. Uh, but nowadays, uh, my kit is uh, Chaotica Eyeball. Uh, I use this little Apogee mic or the Sennheiser MK4, which has an Apogee connection uh, that I can use either in my iPhone, my iPad, or my uh, 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 la uh, my uh, iBook, my MacBook Pro. Um, and that's it. I no longer have to make the pillow forts uh, when I'm in a hotel. The Chaotica eyeball takes care of that. Uh, I no longer have to uh, bring a little box to connect the microphone into uh, my computer because I've got the Apogee iPad, iMac mic um, or the MK4 and they have connections for either my phone, iPad or computer so that that's all i take it's those uh those three things i actually do take my ipad and my laptop but all fits in the same bag so uh and i i the only reason i take them both uh is because i believe in backup there you go there you go facebook facebook though. Hey, cliff zellman what's going on man well i think i'm out of faith well well no no take that back uh, not sure if somebody already asked, but what gets in your zone or drives you in your efforts? Not sure if someone already asked, but what gets you in the zone or drives you in your efforts? Um, I think for most people who do this work, it's you, you, what gets you in the zone is enjoyment of, of doing this work. There's something about it that uh, I just love. I am as excited when I have a booking now is the very first booking I ever had. Uh, I enjoy doing the work. Um, it, and whatever it is. Uh, if it's TV, TV promos, I'm loving it. If it's narration, I'm loving it. If it's commercials, I'm loving it. If it's animation or video games, I'm loving it. Um, and I, I think that's why most people who are in entertainment do entertainment. Nobody gets into it to be rich. That You might hope that is going to be a benefit down the road. Uh, but I think the reason uh, that we actually do this work that we would probably do for free, but don't tell anybody, is because we, we love doing the work. I like doing the work more than I like hearing myself at, of the work. And I know a lot of actor friends of mine on camera who love the acting do not love watching themselves on camera i'm a little bit the same way okay okay another one, another on, facebook. one on facebook oh and i oh let's see i may have skipped somebody uh 
that might be it. Come on, Facebook people. I got a lot of hellos, so I need more questions. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Okay, I'll pop up one more time. Oh, uh, okay, here's one. Uh, hey, Daniel Corpus. I was curious if you thought voice acting would be a better experience if you actually got to be around the other actors in the cast and play off of them. Um, well, you know, in animation we get to do that, and yeah, it is. that's a whole lot of fun. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, sometimes you're in an animation session with, uh, you know, a bunch of other really good actors and, you know, you're cracking yourselves up and just having a ball. Uh, I actually still find it uh, as enjoyable when it's just me, the director, the engineer, and whoever else uh, from the project is around. And we end up doing the same things. You end up having the same kinds of conversations. It's just... Instead of with your fellow actors, uh, it's with the people you're working with. Um, so, yeah, I, I mean, that's that's part of it, uh, enjoying the camaraderie. Um, Tim Bamba, how would you suggest getting into an ADR group? Wow, that's a tough nut to crack. ADR groups are famously cliquish. Uh, if you know somebody in one, let them know you'd love to do it. Uh, you might want to take some classes uh, that you can find around uh, for ADR. Um, you might start looking at the companies that do ADR. There are a number of them in town. And um, start knocking on those doors. And let me tell you something about ADR, too. When I first came to L.A. Uh, before... Uh, they, they did. They did. Yeah. For the other, the other, or the other, 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 the uh, they may be look like they're talking at the time it was shooting, but they're doing this. And somebody has to come in after the fact and put voices in. Not that you're going, not that it's going to be put, uh, intelligible, but that background sound, the background uh, of of other voices in a restaurant, in a hospital, in a police station, walking down the street brings reality uh, to the, the the TV show or movie, and that's what you're doing in ADR. Um, and uh, you would do something like you're in a hospital and uh, the stars are talking, but there's a couple uh, walking down the hall, a doctor and a and a nurse are walking down the hall joking about something. And, you know, you might be in a uh, ADR group with 10 or 12 people and uh, the director says, okay, uh, you and you uh, take those two characters. And then you kind of have to look at, you know, where they are, what they're saying, what they might be saying, come up with something and say it. Now, they, <laughs> uh, you, you might feel like, oh, I want to say something really goofy here. You don't want to do that. You want to say the kinds of things that might be said in a hospital in a restaurant, uh, in a police station, uh, which means you need to learn the jargon that's used in a hospital, in a courtroom, in a police station, in a restaurant, uh, so that even though most people aren't going to hear it intelligibly, uh, that it still has the ring of truth. Uh, and get used to this. Boop, boop, boop. Now go. You're going on that fourth beep. Uh, we do a lot of ADR uh, in movies, maybe uh, when they recorded uh, singly uh, for an actor. Maybe they recorded the line got changed or didn't record well, and the actor has to go in and uh, boop, 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 and on that fourth, what would have been the fourth beep, replace that line. There's also uh, work to be had uh, replacing actors uh, for ADR who may not be available to do the ADR. And if you can sound like that actor, uh, you can work. I've done a few. It's not really my forte, uh, but there are people who do it very, very well. 
Hey, Tony, how you doing? Let's see. Wait a minute. First of all, Terrell, last, any, last any, last any last remedies? Question, what's that? Last question. Last question whatever you whatever you choose. Okay. Well, let's see. Are any, uh, any remedies you suggest for helping your voice recover? Don't talk uh, honey in hot water with lemon. Uh, and one more. Uh, okay. Okay. Tony Dragon. What's up, man? How can you make sure that your studio audio quality is good as your demos quality? Um, well, you want a room that is quiet, that does not bounce sound, uh, and uh, that your electronics don't have any hum in them. If you can do that, you'll be just fine. It's, it's not as difficult as it may seem. Uh, I'll take my travel gear, for instance. As long as the room is quiet, if I've got my Chaotica eyeball, decent microphone, I can recreate uh, a very good sound uh, that I have done auditions at work. I've done jobs uh, in a hotel room with a Chaotica eyeball and my little Apogee mic um, on my uh, iPad or MacBook Pro. It's not that hard. You need quiet, and you need a room that doesn't bounce sound. So there we have. Oh wow, six fifty-five. That hour went by quick. Uh, so anyway, hey, once again, thank you for joining me. I stay for know anything every Wednesday at six p.m. Pacific time. Uh, by the way, uh, what ab what about that PhD? Yeah, yeah, they're, they're absolutely. absolutely. Everybody, everybody should know about Dave's PhD, 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 which is, which is voice, voice over, over phd.com PhD. and learn, and learn everything, everything and more and that Dave, Dave has to has offer right there. Voice over PhD. PhD. You, you may want to put it right in the right Facebook, Facebook uh, community, community there, too. there too. And uh, stop by uh, Dave Fenoy, uh Voice Over Training. Uh, dot com and uh, leave your email address, and you'll you'll. Uh, find out, well, one, you'll get my PDF, uh, uh, Six Steps to Auditions, that book, and uh, you'll find out where I'm teaching, where I'm uh, doing webinars, or when I'm doing webinars, all that good stuff, and uh, so I look forward to you signing up there, and uh, I will see you next Wednesday. Bye, everybody. Bye, everybody. Bye, Facebook.